So the first method of input we're going to look at is a text box, which is obviously done in the Windows Form application since it's a visual component. Now a text box is just another control found inside of the inside of the toolbox. Right down near the bottom of the common controls we see text box. I've already added a few to this program that you see here. Um, each of these four is a text box. So if I select it, what the first thing you see is we go over to the properties panel and we can, manip we can manipulate uh, all these different elements. Now I've named this one uh, appropriately, I've given it a three letter prefix because it is a visual element and the three letter prefix for this is TXT. And then I give it some type of descriptive name which represents what it does. You'll notice that for every text box I've given it a prompt slightly to the left of it. So if I select that prompt, this one, this prompt is named LBL first name prompt. So I know, it, I know it's a label and I know it's a prompt for the first name. Very clear. No questions. It's exactly what it represents back to the text box and we can see that we can change a whole bunch of different properties but there's really only a few that matter now obviously the name matters so we can use it inside of our code the most important property of a text box is of course the text property this text property is going to be used in two cases first of all whatever we put in here will be set up as default data when you first run the program so if I want the first name if I want the default name to be there to be John it will actually show up. So I would just come in here and I would just type in John. And when I hit enter, you'll see that John populates the text box. So when I run the program, when I actually run the program, sorry, we'll see that John actually so shows up in the text box. We won't do anything at this point, but we see that John is there. Another thing that we can do is we can actually limit certain aspects of the text box. So for example, we can set the maximum length that the user can type in. So we can, right now, the maximum length is set at just over 32,000 characters. That's pretty big for a first name. We don't need it to be that big. We can conserve some space. And quite honestly, 20 is probably more than enough. So we hit enter. Nobody's going to be typing more than 20 characters. But just to demonstrate this in a more simplistic approach, let's set it to 5. We hit enter. Now if we run our program, we start typing in here you'll see that I cannot go past five characters no matter how many times I click it so it's stuck like that another value that we can check let me just quickly put max length back to where it belongs so we just put it back to 20 and another property we can change if we just look down a little bit lower there's this password char property this is really handy if you're making a program where you don't want the data to show up while the user is typing it so for example in a password program or something similar so if I change this to say for example a star what's gonna happen is as I type into the text box every single character is gonna show up as this star character um, you can put it as any single letter character thing so or single character element so it can't be multiple characters we can be a single one so if I want them to all be pound signs no not a hashtag it's called a pound sign um, when you run this program and I start typing in here we'll see they just come up more as pound signs now I'm I've got it set up to 20 so it's obviously went off the screen there and I'm just gonna put this back to nothing because I don't really need a password chart for what I'm doing here now what we've done here so far is we've been able to set up the control, we've been able to set up the properties, but now we need to figure out how we're actually going to get the data from the text box. Well, that's why we have the submit button. Now, we know as users of any software that when we're entering in data, we enter in all of our data first, and then we click the submit button. Now, usually in sophisticated programs, that submit button, before it will do anything, will check to make sure you've entered in all the required information. But for our simplistic approach, we're just going to keep it simple. Now, inside of here, I've got some basic code. So we, remember, we can get inside the click function of a, of a button or any other control in two ways. The first way is we can just double click on it, and that will take us to the main, a, uh, the main event of that element. So for example, for a button, the main event is the click event. Um, for, other, for other controls, it's something else. Um, it depends on the type of control it is, but um, let's click for the button. The other way to get to the code for this guy is to select the event lightning bolt over here, 
we can always get back to the properties by selecting the button right beside it by on the event lightning bolt and then we go right to the click property and we can double click beside it now I've already created the submit button so it's already there so if I go to this code you can see it's already here and I already have a little bit of code in here um, so let's take a quick look at what I have showing up in here so now all this code will be executed every single time I click that submit button I've created two variables up here up at the top I've created one called int user age and another one called string user info now why would I need this? Well I need to read that data from the user. So the way that I read the data from the user is essentially I am going to assign the variable user info to whatever value is stored in the text property of the text box because that's where the user typed in. They typed it in and they essentially modified the value of the text property. Now you saw before I had the default value John but if they change that to say Samuel that means that text property would then be holding the value Samuel so what I'm doing is I'm just taking now remember when we use an assignment system an assignment operator on the left hand side is the location we're going to store the value on the right hand side is the expression in this case it's going to be whatever value we it is we're going to store this is interesting because in all the times we've seen a text box before our label the dot text property has always been the place that we're storing the data but this time because we're getting input from the user and we're not displaying text we're actually getting the data from the text property so that means that we gotta actually have the text property on the right hand side of the equal sign so simplistic, uh, simply what this, what this is doing is saying take the text property owned by the text box named txt age and store that string inside of the text or inside of the string variable named user info now I plan on using that user age for other purposes and I've made a simple example here so since I'm going to be doing math on it I need to convert it so I'm gonna take the user info string convert it to an integer and then store it into my variable my int variable user age and then I can do my processing which you see here user age equals user age times two it really has no meaning I'm just showing an example here and then I'm displaying it on the in a message box now remember from previous examples output in message boxes and labels must also be in string format unless we concatenate it with text so for example if I put like your age is and then I could concatenate that with the variable user age and that would work just fine but if I just simply want to output the user age which is not a string I must actually convert the data so here you see me convert user age to a string before it's shown in the message box so if I run this program and I type in a value into user age let's say 17 and we hit submit we should get double the value of 17 so we should see 34 in the message box which is exactly what we see what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow this down a little bit so you can see how this works one line at a time so I put what we call a breakpoint in here. It's kind of like a pause point. I'm going to run the program again. Now this time when I type in 17 and I click submit, the program's going to pause right here. And right now I look at I'm looking at this one line of code. This one line of code hasn't actually executed yet, but I can mouse over certain pieces of it to see what the current values are. So right now user info has no value. It says null. Null means essentially less than nothing. It's completely non-existent. Think of it like undefined. Now over here, if I mouse over the text property, I can see that the string 17 is currently stored in there. So when I run this, when I um, run this one line of code, I'm just going to use the step button. That's just the F10 key. So that one line of code has now been executed. So now user info should hold also the text value of 17. So now user age, so since I plan on doing math on that value 17, I want to convert it into a numeric type. So what I can do here is on this line, I convert user info into an int and then store it into user age. User age has a value zero to start with because I haven't given it any data. As soon as I run this line of code, we'll see that user age now holds the value 17. Not as a, not as a string, but actually the number down here we're going to do the math again and now user age should hold the value 34 which it does and then when we output it we get the message box which shows up 
as 34. Now this is fine. It works just fine and dandy, but that's a lot of steps just to get one piece of information. There's got to be an easier way to do this, and there is. We can actually cut out the middleman. What I mean by that is we don't need this this user info value, which we're not actually using for anything other than like a temporary container to hold the current text property we were reading in. So what we can essentially do is combine these two lines into one line. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to delete this user info variable. And as soon as we delete it, we see we get errors popping up left, right, and center because um, user info is no longer in our C Sharp dictionary. We've just deleted it from the C Sharp dictionary. So instead of trying to convert the string variable user info, we're just going to convert directly whatever is currently stored inside the text property. I know it's a string. So instead of needing this line at all, we're going to get rid of it. And we can see we're now cut it down to three lines. We're doing a lot more in this line, but we have to remember that we read it from right to left and it always um, follows the same order of operations. So it's going to satisfy or it's going to evaluate what's inside the brackets first. So it's going to get the text property, which is currently stored in text age, which is 17 or whatever we type in there. And then it's going to convert that string into an integer and then store that integer directly into user age. And I'll run this program again and you'll see that we should get the exact same results. Let's stop it and run it again. We type in 17. We should still get 34. And we do. So that is a text box.